Hey, Jay Clark with Works Connection. Uh, today we're going to give you some tips on installing a Henson clutch basket and all the pieces into your bike and uh, show you how to do it the right way. One of the first things you want to do is drain the oil. So on this Honda 450 we need to remove the, the big cover on the clutch side here so we're going to drain the coolant right now. Okay, on the CRF 450 from about 04 all the way to current, the clutch basket won't fit out of this, this outer cover here uh, if you want to take the entire clutch basket out. If you take this cover out, you can change your plates, your inner hub and pressure plate, but you can't get the basket out. It won't fit. So you have to take out the entire uh, inner cu clutch cover here. You got to take this one out. On about all other bikes besides the Honda 450, you can remove the entire clutch setup right out of this cover. Just like on this Yamaha here, you can pu pull the pressure plate, inner hub, and clutch basket right out. Simple deal. So on this Honda, we have to remove the entire basket. So we're going to start by getting our brake pedal out of the way, kick starter, and start removing the bolts. When you pull the clutch the cover off here, you want to hold the kickstarter down, the shaft down so it doesn't come popping out on you. Just remove these two bolts and just this hose clamp right here, the whole cover's off. In this case, the stock gasket tore. It's pretty common, so we're going to replace it with a Kometic gasket when we uh, reinstall this. So remove all the stock springs and bolts from the uh, pressure plate here. You pull off the stock pressure plate, like so. You can remove all the stock clutch plates. We've got one here in the bottom. We can take it out after we take the entire basket out. This is the one with the judder spring in stock. The Henson setup doesn't run that. A lot better setup. So we remove the top hat. So stock, there's a washer bent over to keep the nut in place if it were to loosen up. You just want to bend the tabs back. So they're completely off. Now we're ready to take off the nut. So you need a, a clutch basket tool to hold, hold the inner hub in place. You can, this is a stock Kawasaki tool. Um, Motion Pro has a good one you can use as well. Just using an impact to pop the nut off, comes right off. So you have your washer here, and then you have a hard flat washer, kind of like a spacer right here. So those three pieces stay in that order. So removing our inner hub, as you can see the stock, last fiber plate and judder spring are still there. We won't be using those pieces. And now we can move our basket like so. Okay, so here's our stock basket and our new Henson. It comes with a new backing plate and we'll remove the new Torx bit screws here. Remove all those off and we're going to have to grind or drill these heads off to remove the, our gear off the basket to put it on the new Henson basket. Okay, so on, for this basket you can either drill out the holes or you can grind them off. On these ones right here we drilled and there's the the rivet head and the ones we ground, you grind like this. When you grind it, you got to be real careful not to bump the gear because the gear actually sticks above this plate. And of course, this plate, you can ruin this plate. It's okay because you have a new plate uh, that Henson supplies. So at this point, we're going to pry off the this, this stock plate, backing plate. You can just walk around like so. It'll pop right off if you haven't drilled out correctly or ground off correctly. The entire plate will just pop off. So at this point we throw this away and then obviously now we need to pull this off and clean all this very well before we place it onto the new Henson basket. Just slightly, very slightly pry up. It's not a press fit or anything on here, it's just held on by these cushions. So our stock basket is now ready for the trash can. Okay, we've cleaned our primary drive gear off and it's ready to install. And it's real simple, the cushions come in the right place and you simply just press it on. Just like this, all the way around. Nice and even. 
ready to install a backing plate. Right here, uh, Henson tells you to use uh, Loctite 272 only. That's what they've tested and recommend. So you want to have Loctite on here very well on all the bolts. And these are new style bolts that have the Torx head a lot better than the older Allen head. Uh, at least I think so. The easiest thing to do at this point is just drive them down by hand. Okay, so I've gotten all these snug now by hand, and now we're going to torque them to 3.3 foot-pounds. It's probably a good idea to pull this sticker off just so you don't doesn't come off and get clogged up in your oil filter or something in your motor. So we're just going to work our way around while our buddy Cody holds it steady. Don't want to clamp it in a vise or anything. And if you over tighten these, you can break these heads right off. So at this point, we flip it over, kind of wipe off any excess Loctite here. Okay. And we're, we have a punch, and we're going to peen right where the bolt comes out, where it meets the metal right here, where the aluminum and the steel meet, right there. What that's going to help do is keep the bolt in place if it ever were to come loose, right there. So at this point, it's a good idea. I have a little bucket here that just keeps some, you know, what was new oil. Just keeps some oil in there, and we just drop the plates individually, one at a time, so it gets oil in between each plate. And we let them soak there. A good idea to let them soak for at least you know 20, 30 minutes. Longer is even better. And let all let it, the oil cover them all. And let them soak in there while you're putting the clutch uh, basket back together on in, in the into the bike. Okay, so with the stock cover, you can usually reuse this O-ring if you're careful with it. And I usually line it up in a similar location as the stock one. You want to be careful not to stretch it out. And so you just kind of lightly push it in. Don't work it around. You, you want to just get it in there. The Henson has a groove cut in here that's really nice that'll hold the O-ring in place. And then once you get it all the way in there, then you can push it down a little bit more firmly. And the groove holds it really nicely. So you just want to work it around. And if, if you end up cutting this or tearing it, you don't want to try to, you know, gasket sealer it up or anything. You need a new one. And so you push it all the way down, all the way around the entire cover, like so. And then on a clean surface, you could just push down firm, feel that it's seated down really nicely all the way around. And that's all there is to it. So at this, at this point, we want to make sure our entire gasket surface is clean all the way around and reinstall our dowels and gasket. With the dowels in the engine and the gasket here, it's a little easier than trying to do it the other way around on the other cover. We can drop our new basket in place. So you just turn the motor over just a little bit. You'll feel it fall right down into place. We'll drop the stock washer back in place and our new Henson inner hub. Just jiggle it right into place. So our inner hub is in, in place. Drop the stock washer in, and then the bendable washer. If this gets used too many times, you'll need to have a new one. You kinda gotta push it in place, and we'll install this with some Loctite. Okay, so place your basket holder in place. You want to check your uh, stock torque specifications from your manual. In this case, this Honda is 59 pounds, ranges from 55 to they say to 65 pounds usually on the torque right here. So now that we've tightened it and torqued it, we want to feel that there's no uh, grabbing, that nothing's over tightened. And in this case, we're free spinning, everything's good. Okay, so in this case, we're here, we want to bend up this tab. So if the nut ever were to come loose, 
it would be held in place. And you want to be real careful not to, you know, torque too much on your, your new uh, Henson surface here. But so you can bend up. You can also, with a little uh, flat blade and a hammer, so at this point right here, you can actually just tap it right into place against the... Okay. And so right here, make sure that our push rod's still in place, but we can continue on with our assembly. So we're pulling out our pre-soaked plate, and we drop it right into place. We can start with the fiber plate, obviously, just like so. So now we're start with our, have our metal plate go second, and just keep going back and forth, each one. So there's our last plate in place. So now we'll install the top hat. I don't know the correct name for it, but that's what we kind of call them. Right here in place, make sure everything feels good. Install the pressure plate. And sometimes you gotta turn it to where it falls in the notch. So we're gonna go one more, right there. We're installing the Henson Springs. These are longer, but not just longer, they're stronger to hold up to the added clutch abuse. Install those like so. So at this point, we want to just tighten down our springs. Nice to work them down evenly. Make sure your springs stay straight on the washer. Get down about three quarters, 80% or so, and start bouncing around. To, then go on over to the other side and do the same thing, kind of rotate around the basket. Like here. Okay, so we're tightening these down. If you want to check torque, uh, nine to 10 foot pounds is usually the range it's in. And you want to check your uh, owner's manual to get the proper torque specs for these bolts. It is common for guys to break these off. They get a, a spring bound up or they tighten one down before the others. And it's common to see a basket with a one broken stud in the inner hub. So take your time, rotate around and tighten them all up. If, it's, if, you, if you twist hard enough to turn the motor over, uh, it's usually more than, uh, you're usually doing too much. Perfect. So at this point, we'll check our clutch play to make sure that uh, nothing feels out of whack. Okay, so on this Honda, it's really tight in here. You want to get the Kickstarter, feel that get started, and push on that while you kind of walk your hose back in place. And you want to look around that your gasket stays in properly in place in those dowels. And with a bolt, you can make sure and look through these holes to make sure that your gasket's lined up and you're not going to crush the gasket in any one place. So now you start reinstalling your bolts. It's a good idea just to set them all in there and make sure that you have the correct length bolt in the correct spot and work, work your way around. On this fitting in here and the o-ring just make sure that that o-ring stays nice in place as you reinstall and then re-snug these back down tighten your hose clamp okay on the henson cover we make sure that our gasket is still properly in place set it on in place good idea to keep a little pressure on it right there and you can start to take it down about three quarters 80 percent So at this point, I would go ahead and snug up right across each other. So, okay. Okay, when you're putting brake pivot on, it's a good idea to put a little grease on the washer. You tighten up your brake pedal, want to make sure it's not bound up at all. That seal, sometimes you need to push it down in place as you're tightening it, and you're good to go. Little, little bit of thread locker 
on our Kickstarter bolt, those like to come loose and tighten up like so. Hey, so that's all there is to installing a Henson uh, clutch kit into your bike. A little bit more work on the Honda 450 than it is the other bikes, but still not too bad. You just got to drain the water, uh, do those added steps we showed. Good idea to lay the bike over on its side on any of the bikes that you're uh, doing. A little easier to work on, simple deal. Henson does a real good job of providing good instructions. Good idea to read those first before you get started. If you don't feel comfortable in uh, grinding or drilling off the rivets of the stock basket, take it to a machine shop or your, to your, uh, your local dealership and see if they can help you out. So that's all there is to it, and hopefully we'll see you at the track soon.